Back again, and we have a very beautiful lady. Her name is Hazel Antaramian, and she's an artist, and she also writes. <laughs> hi, Hazel. Hi, hi. Carol. You're the first Hazel. My mother had a girlfriend, I, Hazel, and so it's next, this is the first time I said had that, I, that could come back, yeah, back into my life. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, well, it's an unusual name. I had a bit of an issue when I was growing up, but uh, then... Then all of a sudden, I'm in my 30s, and Hazel becomes popular again with younger people. Hmm. And, uh, and then, yeah, it's now it's actually not that unusual to, <laughs> to bump into one. But <laughs> Well, that's neat. Yeah, that's yeah, neat. Yeah. Now, I changed my name from Nola to Carol because I didn't uh, like Nola. Oh, and now nice. I think, gee, yeah. I should have used that. There are too many Carols. Yeah. <laughs> But well, you, I do get remembered because of the name. I don't, yeah. <laughs> well, okay, you yeah. want to hear about your art first. All right. Well, uh, I'm a member of Fig Tree Gallery, but sadly it's my last uh, month. Uh, oh. I'm, in a sense, I've been there for five years. I have some other projects coming up, so mm -hmm. I had to release myself from certain obligations. Oh, and. I see. I'm also working on my doctorate, so that was Ooh, one of those. That takes the heavy, a long time. <laughs> yes, it was a heavy, and I also teach, so there was a bit on my plate, mm. and uh, unfortunately, something had to suffer. Yeah. And, and but I'm not, uh, I'm not necessarily going to stop painting, but I'm going to kind of put it on the back burner. Mm -hmm. But this last show was really unique, and uh, it was called Strokes of Genius. It's actually still up. At, oh. at, at, so every, anybody can see it till um, December, I think, twenty uh, ninth. Then Ooh, it comes that's down. So good, you've got time. Get yeah. So uh, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays from twelve to four, the gallery is open, mm -hmm. and uh, it is a collaborative. So uh, there's about thirty artist writers. So about fifteen artists with their um, mm -hmm. with their writer poet companion. And um, the artist had a painting, a sculpture, whatever piece, and then mm -hmm. they worked with the poet or the um, writer uh, to create the, um, the narrative behind oh, it. Oh, wonderful. And sometimes there was a way that they integrated their, their kind of collaborative experience, mm -hmm. and, then, and other times it was more of a response to it. So I worked with um, Marisol Baca, who is actually the Poet Laureate of, mm. uh, for Fresno. Wow. Uh, of, uh, from this year up to 20, I think 2021 that she goes up to. And yeah, 2021. And she wrote a piece called In Eights Octaves, and it goes along with my painting. Oh. And, and then I ended up actually being a writer for another artist. <laughs> and his name is Richard Silva. He's um, uh, first um, first generation Portuguese American, and he works. He has a studio here, and mm -hmm. uh, he works in this beautiful, elaborate colors and mm. abstract shapes, oh. and it's just you know really glorious. But the piece that I wrote about was actually a bit of a dark piece, and but it spoke to his upbringing here in the Central Valley, which mm -hmm. was very interesting and. Um, his uh, work in San Francisco as an artist training there. So it was oh very gosh. interesting. So there's Richard. There's a picture of Richard Silva. So, oh. And uh, so it's, uh, it's a great show. Uh, there's everybody that I've got a quick list, if I can. Marvin Armstrong with his writer, Chris Jansen. I'm just going to read the artists sure. that work at Fig Tree. Uh, Tom Cousel, Michael McDowell, Cho Lin Park, Marilyn Prescott, Michael Reese. Uh, Dixie Salazar, Anne Scheid, uh, Manuel Vasari, uh, Kathy Wasika, Ebony Zurl, and um, Linda Zupsik. So wow. maybe some people have heard of these names because they're prominent artists in the community. They're uh, former instructors at the colleges and they're as far as oh art and then there. Well, so it's a cooperative. Of, I've yeah. never heard of that doing the, putting the things together like that. That is fantastic. Yeah, it's a well what they do is we have so uh, an artist would have a, a month where they would show their work. They would mm -hmm. sign up for that kind mm -hmm. of block. But then there are some months that we use as group shows. 
and then there would be a theme around the group show. Oh. And this was our December group show being this collaborative with the artist, uh, with an, uh, yeah, with a writer and, or a poet, which was That uh, is so wonderful. Yeah, it was fun. It All was you fun. need now is that music. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, actually, there are some artists that will do a show with music. Oh. In fact, the last show that I did, I had da a dance troupe. Uh, wow. So I had them mingle with the with the reception, the people at the reception, and then all of a sudden break out into a dance. And then <laughs> nobody knew what was happening, and they kind of backed off, which was wonderful. They backed toward the back, you know, they kind of gave them room, and and then had the, the dance, uh, you know, just kind of uh, evolve in front of them. It was just wow. beautiful. And I was up on a ladder taking photos because I said, I can't <laughs> miss this. They probably wanted, where is she? <laughs> but oh it was gosh. it was really delightful. <laughs> and then the other paintings that are kind of uh, being shown, they're connected to a show I did uh, back when I was working on a project called uh, Post- um, World War II repatriation of Armenians mm. to Soviet Armenia. Mm. And it's a history that I've lived because I was actually born in Armenia. Oh. Yeah, I came here when I was five years old. My father was born in America, uh -huh. and my mother was born in France. So it's like, it's, it's very Did strange. Did you ever get together? <laughs> yeah. no. So what happened was they actually, my father left America at 17, 18. My mother, at 12 years old, from France, went to Armenia because their parents were part of this repatriation. Oh. And it was kind of this post-World War II calling by mm -hmm. Stalin saying, come back to your homeland, so on and so forth. Very, you know, the Soviet propaganda of the day. Yes, oh yes. And so um, they did, because their parents were genocide survivors, and they mm. wanted to go back to what they perceived to be their Armenia. And so they did, and it was just obviously it was a disaster course, in the yes, making, but um, they were stuck there because they lose their citizenships of wherever they were. And uh, so any, anyway, they ended up there. They lived their formative years were there. And then, of course, um, they met because a lot of those people that came from the outside, we call them the uh, Akbars. They were the people who were from the diaspora. They had brought mm -hmm. their culture of France. They brought the culture of wherever they came from, mm -hmm. America. Uh, some came from China. I mean, there were oh. Armenians there. They came from there, Iran um, uh, and Lebanon, Syria. I mean, all those places, they came back, Greece. And they came, came to Armenia and um, kind of intermingled, lived and of course my mother and father they met they got married my <laughs> sister and i were born there but then as soon as the as soon as there was a change in the regime like in the sense of stalin dies and then you know eventually khrushchev comes to power between him there was between them there was one one other person but he softens the rules and as soon as we could get out we we got out oh my gosh and so yes. that's why that's why then i oh. came here uh, assimilated uh, uh, as much as possible because that was the rule of the day as well. You, you, mm. know, you, you jump in, you learn the English as soon as you can, and um, uh, you just become American. And in a sense oh, that, you sure are. <laughs> in a sense that I didn't even know what Armenian, being an Armenian was, oh, no. uh, because I was, you know, just right off the bat going into becoming an American. And then when you question, like, why do I, you know, why do I have this weird name, this last name? Why, you know, do you question all these different traditional mm -hmm. things? And then you come to grips with your history. Uh, and by the time I was a lot older is when this history, this repatriation history became something that I was much more in a scholarly way curious, not just curious, you know. Um, like, why do we yeah. have these weird pictures? I don't get it, you know, mm -hmm, of, yeah. of a country that I don't even recognize. This, is, I this is hard to, hard to mm -hmm. see coming into being an artist. <laughs> yeah, well, what happens was I was, as a, as a child, I was an artist. Oh. Okay, so I was always drawing. Mm -hmm. And I think that might have been part of that outlet, you know. And so when I came to the realization of this history, I said, I'm not going to retell it as a historian, because that's not what I am. I'm an artist, I'm gonna retell it as an artist. Yes. And that's what, those, were, those pictures then are 
telling that one in particular oh, is telling beautiful. the story of like the immigrant. She's holding the shoes, and oh. underneath there's like the the wash that you usually see in these countries. You know, where you you know you've, you're still kind of in the. That's yeah, beautiful. so that one, there was the one before she was having, uh, like this one is another one that's, excuse me, connected oh to, to this story, that this family story that is actually um, not just a family story, but it's a forgotten historical event. Mm. And uh, usually was a footnote, but now it's become, after the, the downfall of the Soviet Union mm-hmm. and the archives opening up, which was only in the 90s, uh, people are getting records. And so I was able to then get more information and express it. And then plus I did interview survivors of that period as well. Oh and from gosh. that I collected photographs and it was my response, artistic response. So I call it a art and ethnographic uh, project yeah oh and it's continuing because next year in, in the fall i'll be presenting my um presentation here's another one with uh, the, the 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 like a doll as a baby and you can see then the kind of the carpet and this distraught oh mother because gosh. there was a lot of children who died with this oh. one epidemic that happened um sure. uh, yeah some childhood disease that really wiped out a lot of children at one point. But I'm going to be showing this information um, in uh, Paris next year. So I'm really excited. Yeah, because there's a lot of Armenians there too. A lot of people who are from that era Mm -hmm. have survived and and ended up back in France where they came from. So so it's exciting. I'm so excited for you. It's um, it's just outstanding. It it really is. Thank you. Yeah, it's um, to me. It's you know, it's one of those things where I don't paint a lot. I'm not a prolific painter, as some people are. But it's when there's a surge of something to come out. <laughs> Same with my writing. Uh, then I just go and it just flows, it and just it's flows. wonderful when I it know, does. I know that's the way it's been for me too. Yeah, it's amazing. It's, I know it's not really amazing, but so many uh, artists are writers too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's well. Art is another way to communicate, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a, a different way. It's a different way to communicate. Well, this has been so fantastic. Yeah, it's beautiful. And, oh my gosh! Thank you so only much, Carol. That I want to hear when you go to Paris. When you sure, come back when I come back, I'll, yeah, oh my gosh. I'll take some shots and then we'll share that. Fantastic! Oh, I'm <laughs> that so happy delightful. for you. Okay. Thank you so much. It okay, was a pleasure. We'll see you again. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. We'll be right back. Thank you for coming Thank in. Thank you. I appreciate this. You're a wonderful person.